Hi everybody, all my followers, be welcome to another video. So this video today is going to be on how to replace a engine ECU on a Honda Jazz 2012, but this will apply to all the years. Uh, in this case it's for the MK3, but I don't know, it might apply for the MK2, whatever. Uh, and we're going to be doing it using the Maxi Sys. Now, uh, if you watch the video for this particular car, you'll see that this is the second time we are doing this, even though the first time I recorded it, things didn't went as planned, so I'm doing this the second time. Anyway, too much talking. The ECU in this case is this ECU. Now, the 37820-RB2-G17 is the original ECU from this car. So this ECU that you are looking at is the original ECU for this car that is faulty. Um, I will leave a link in the description below for the video uh, where I've diagnosed the problem so we can have a look and understand what's wrong with this ECU. Uh, the replacement in there is the second replacement, but the replacement in there now is exactly the same part number except that it is a G13 instead of G17, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, should do the job anyway. Uh, so. How are we going to do this? So I'm kind of loaded already on the car itself uh, through the history. So I'm going to turn the key on. Uh, so the issue has been replaced already anyway. So uh, we are going to turn the ignition on and you're going to see that I will have a flashing immobilizer key. There we go. There is even no point to attempt to start the car because it's not going to start. Okay. Uh, the battery is on charge, by the way, as you can see in there, 13.38 volts. I have the battery uh, charger plugged in. So what we got, as you can see, is flashing. So what we're going to do now is program the ECU. It's really easy. A quick note here. Um, you don't really program keys or anything to the ECU. What you do is we'll be programming the ECU into the immobilizer system. So, which means once I program the ECU that's in there now, the ECU will no longer work, okay? Uh, just a quick note. Um, so, we're going to go on to hot functions. <clears throat> this is the main menu you're going to land on. Uh, and we're going to go on to immobilizer and keys. It's going to be a really quick video, guys, because this is really simple. Uh, it only takes a few minutes. So there's this um, vehicle has a keyless access remote or one push start system. No, it doesn't. It's just a normal uh, blade key. Sorry, guys, there's a little bit of clear. It's just a normal blade key. So it's no uh, buttons or anything like that. So we'll press no. Uh, the tester. What? That's impossible. That's absolutely impossible. That's impossible. Let's try this again because I've just did it. Because I did it with the other ECU, so it will have to do it. Right, don't know what's going on with this. That's going to do something else then. Why does not support? What the hell is going on here? <laughs> Okay, this is not sounding good. Do not tell me that my second replacement is also faulty. Why is not communicating? Come on. Well, it is communicating. Okay, let's try. Actually, I will do something here, guys. It might be that's why, because I've just loaded the data from the last car. 
maybe that's my problem so let's gonna do something different here let's gonna load the car from the start let me see if it detects which car we're talking about and we'll just do a completely loading of the vehicle again maybe that 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 that, that is the issue I just went through the history and maybe loaded the wrong parameters it's gonna have uh, there we go because that's okay so that's coming up with a different uh, with a different VIN number for the car okay so maybe that uh, is why why it is so let me see if I can but I want the right VIN number in there let me let me do something here uh, oh, this is not going very well so let's do a jazz says it's 2010 but this is actually 2013 or 12 okay so let me do something here first this is going slightly different than the last time so the first thing I want to do let's see if I can program the VIN number to this <coughs> So I can then load the right. I don't know why he's doing this. Okay, so I'm going to. Okay, so I need to, to put the right VIN number now. Let me put the right VIN number and try to see if we can write this VIN number. Okay, so this is the correct VIN number for this car. So I'll press enter, press OK. Yes, it is. Okay, been check. So we wrote the right VIN number. So now I'm going to come out completely of this. I'm going to completely come out of this because I still have the key flashing. Let's read the car again. Now we should pull the correct VIN number. There we go. Don't know why it hasn't changed in there. Ah, there we go. It changed it already. Yes. I still have the demobilizer key flashing. So let's try this now. But the other one, I did it like this. The first time I did it, I did it through here, and it changed the VIN number while doing the immobilizer thingy. There we go. <laughs> I don't understand why I did that, okay? Okay, so immobilizer. Interesting that I had to change the VIN number first. Don't, don't really understand. Anyway. Let's gonna carry on special functions and now we're going to do replace ECM or PCM press OK you can read this if you want okay I just gotta press OK as you're gonna see it's a straightforward process again I don't understand why he asked me to change the number the first time I did it with the exact same part number ECU the one that came faulty um, he did a straight way through these um, hot functions. Um, I never had to change the VIN number. The actually, Maxis used changed the VIN number while doing this process. So don't understand why he, he asked me for something different this time, but not not really sure. Okay, so switch the has been completed. So switch the key off. So I'm going to switch off. As you can see, it's still flashing. Switch it off. Now it's going to tell me to make sure they will start the engine. So right now it should start the engine when I try to start the engine, which I'm going to do now. As you can see, the thing goes off. Oh, I'm so happy. Not just because the car started, guys, but because, well, watch my other video uh, and you'll see why I'm so happy. I'm extremely happy, guys. I'm extremely happy, but I'm going to 
carry on recording the other video now um so yeah go in the description you will understand why i'm so happy <laughs> but this guys is how you program a used dcu on a honda jazz 2012 um again guys the first time i did it i know i'm repeating myself uh, the first time i did it i did i did not have to change the vin number first it literally allowed me to do it straight from that main from the landing page odd functions and then i went through the same process i went now and during this process of the immobilizer programming he actually changed the, the vin number on the ecu so i'm not really sure why he did this this time not really 100 percent sure but uh, but sometimes you need to understand or you need to get your head around things and try different ways of of doing things it could have been i don't know maybe a different software on this ecu or something like that who knows nevertheless guys we have a working car with a second hand ecu uh, on a hand jazz uh, using the maxis ms 908p with no further ado guys hope you enjoyed the video hope there's some information here you can find useful if you do have any questions any comments please put them below and like always thanks for watching